All right, now it's time to talk to Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism once again. Joe, fresh off of uh, Lake of the Woods. How was your trip up there? Good. Things were good. You know, uh, whenever you're catching a walleye, is, uh, life's pretty darn good. And we caught <laughs> a lot of walleyes, so it was a good thing. Nice. Well, I'm assuming I saw your uh, your fishing report that you shared on social media last week. I'm assuming it's still kind of that crankbait slash crawler approach. Yeah, it is. It is. Yep. And, you know, um, this is the dog days of, of summer on Lake of the Woods. So a lot of those fish are out in that no man's land area. But, you know, when I was out there, we found fish in other areas. And, you know, you and I have talked even off, you know, air, but uh, not every wall in the system is doing the same thing. So there is a big, big number, big numbers of walleyes out in that no man's land at 30 to 36, 37 feet of water. And that's the deepest part of the basin on Lake of the Woods. That's called Big Traverse Bay. And, you know, there's a lot of life out there. There's there's minnows, there's um, blood worms, there's different hatches going on periodically. There's just a lot of stuff living out there that these fish can feed on. The tulabies are out there. And the tulabies, otherwise called ciscos, you know, when a walleye on Lake of the Woods becomes about 25 inches long, which is about five pounds, they still eat other stuff, but a good portion of their diet switches to tulabies, and that's where they live. So there's just a lot of life out there, Brett, and it showed on the graphs. Now, where we found our eater fish this last, just a couple of days I was fishing, it was anywhere really from 15 to about 22 feet of water. Um, and that just happened to be the fish I found and the fish that I was fishing. However, when I went after the bigger fish, I slid deeper, and boy, you could you could see them down there. They were down there. And we also caught eaters pulling deep, too. And then I went and experimented, you know, because we had all of our fish. So I was just messing around a little bit with the, the folks I was fishing with. And, you know, uh, I went up shallow and pulled fish in like eight feet of water, looking looking for uh, just a little bit of variety. And then we went out deep and, uh, you know, went after the big ones a little bit. I know why those fish eat tulabies. Tulabies are delicious. I don't blame them yeah. for wanting to eat them. I know people aren't really going to target them on Lake of the Woods much, but I know we've caught them through the ice quite a bit up there when we're fishing in the wintertime. And I know people are starting to target them in, a, in other places. And a, I'm not going to tell a guy to stop targeting walleyes on Lake of the Woods, but man, some smoked tulipy is, is delicious. And uh, it's definitely an, an over, overlooked delicacy. And uh, it could be considered another bonus fish that you can get up there and Joe, let's let's talk about where we're at because Labor Day is coming up. It's not too far away. Always, everybody thinks about that as being the unofficial end of summer. What does it normally look like uh, as far as getting lodging up at Lake of the Woods and going out with a with a guide uh, in the fall in in September? And do you think this year with COVID and the border closure, do you think this year is going to be any different? You know, hard to say. I mean, we, we have some uh, busy times up at Lake of the Woods right now for, for all those reasons, but you certainly can find lodging. And, you know, the one thing about Lake of the Woods is we have, man, we have 50 plus lodging facilities, 50 plus. So, you know, if you want to find, find a place to stay and a place to go out with, normally you can. The one thing I'll say is that if you're going up, let's say, on a busy weekend, we have something on our website called the Lodging Availability Finder. Hmm. Pretty much you just tell them if you want to fish up at the Angle or the South Shore Rainy River area. And then you put that in there and then you just put in there what dates you want to come and, and what your, you know, the details of your trip. You know, I'd like a guide for two days, whatever the case might be. You submit that and that goes to all of the resorts in that geographic area. And consequently, you know, by, by one quick little email, you've reached everybody and then they'll start chiming back. Yep, I got openings for when you're looking, et cetera. All right. Well, if people want to go find that, uh, that info or keep up with what's going on up at Lake of the Woods, where should they go for more info, Joe? You know, best way to check out our, uh, our uh, website, and that is lakeofthewoodsmn.com. This has been the Finding Fins Fishing Podcast, part of the Sporting Journal Radio family. Subscribe wherever you get podcasts or go to findingfins.com and make sure to like our sponsors. As we all navigate through the tough times of 2020, finding new ways to enjoy summer has become a way of life. If you're searching for the perfect getaway this summer, look no further than the walleye capital of the world, Lake of the Woods. Fish the Rainy River, Big Traverse Bay, and don't forget you can still experience the uniqueness of the Northwest Angle. For your best chance to catch big fish, go where the big fish are, Lake of the Woods. Plan your trip at lakeofthewoodsmn.com.